Hello and welcome to Finishing Touch. My name is Riley James. It's officially hoodie season. This is a podcast via the State Soccer Network. Today's show is sponsored by Steezy. From comfort to function, Steezy thought of it all with their brand new React No Show and Adapt Essential Crew. Steezy, the athletic sock for you. Keep moving forward. We're so excited to be joined by James Mixon Moore, the head coach of the boys and girls soccer team in Dyer, Tennessee at Gibson County High School. James, thank you so much for joining the show, and how are you doing? I'm doing well. And uh, by the way, my first name is James. That's my name the bank calls and my bills call, but I actually go by Mixon. Okay, so you go by Mixon. Yes, sir. That's right. Gotcha. So I tell my classroom, I teach I teach Spanish. I tell my classroom, so my, uh, my bills call me James. My friends call me Mixon. You'll call me Senior Moore or Coach Moore. <laughs> That's incredible. I just had to ask because that opened up so many more questions I, I want to get into, but I'll just save save one for myself. Uh, a Spanish speaking high school teacher who coaches soccer in Tennessee. I mean, how does this happen? And he's redheaded. And well, so it actually gets <laughs> even weirder than all that. My dad was a uh, my dad's first wife uh, married a woman from uh, Thailand. Uh, her name was Pun Porn. And uh, she, he spoke Thai growing up. He talk, spoke Thai when they got married. He, he learned Thai while he actually, you know, probably courted her in Thai during the Vietnam War. And it made me really just appreciate languages. And so I got into the language they offered here at Gibson County High School when I was in school was Spanish. And I started to fall in love with it. And it just kind of went with it. Uh, as for the soccer, the, how I came to like soccer, it was just a, we had a P. We had a basketball coach that had P. Had soccer at P. One day, and I was all like, "Man, I really like this." So I joined the local YMCA team, and then I was on the first high school team here at Gibson County High School. And then, um, yeah, so um, I did all that. I played football. I was a basketball mascot for years. Played baseball growing up too. I mean, I just played it all. I loved it all. I actually really wanted to go to football for years, but um, soccer opportunity came up quicker, and I was like, you know what? This I can make this. Uh, they need somebody that cares about them, and so I've been doing that. I've coached at uh, three different high schools now. So, uh, but yeah, it's been fun. I've, I've enjoyed it. So, so I, there's a thousand more things I want to dip into with that answer. By the way, uh, a basketball okay. mascot. What's yes. the uh, what what mascot were you? We were the pioneers. We're, we are the pioneers. So actually, it turned out when I was in like eighth grade, I wanted to go to the junior high basketball games, and. Uh, and not to worry about paying for stuff. So I was like, what if I was just a mascot? It'd be kind of cool, you know? <laughs> and uh, I liked basketball. I loved basketball. I love watching it. I love playing it. But I just wanted to go on the team. And so, I, actually, I got pretty good in high school. But by then, I already loved cheerleading so much. So I was actually – I asked my cheerleading sponsor three times. We were the Pirates. Um, and I was like, is there any way – and third time, she goes, you know what makes them fine? If you make you an outfit, I'll let you go on the doing floor. And all of a sudden, I said, okay. I went home. I got me some baseball jogging pants on. I got some tall baseball socks. Got an eye patch. Which turns out, where's your eye out? You have to switch it or you'll wear your eye out. I uh, got a bandana. I had somebody draw a little uh, mustache on me. It was cool. It was good times. So we were at Consolidation High School. School. So we went from junior high. You had one mascot. Then you went to high school. I had a different mascot. So when I got to Gibson County High School, they were like, uh, we're, they wanted to start a mascot program anyhow. So I was like Davy Crockett for four years. So I played football <laughs> in the fall. I played, I was a basketball mascot in the uh, winter. And then I did uh, soccer in the spring. That was my thing. And uh, actually, when I got in the weight room, I actually got pretty good at basketball. But by then, I already loved cheerleading. I ended up doing it in college. My senior year, I was stunted in, in, in high school. So, because I wasn't like a big pioneer, I was like just a David Crockett suit, literally just a David Crockett suit. Right. So, I stunted in high school at my senior year, and then in college, I did it for two years at Dyerburg State Community College, and then actually, I was the mascot for the local AA minor league baseball team. I was uh, R-I-B-B-E-E, Ribby, Ribby, and uh, <laughs> so I like to tell people from the class of 06, I was the first athlete to go pro. <laughs> just just kind of saying so. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. a, a redheaded Spanish speaking cheerleader from Tennessee is now a soccer coach. That's Man, right. the, you have got so many layers. Mixing. Yeah. This is incredible. I was also a guard in football, a defensive end in football. Uh, yeah. I was never really great at football, but I love being on the football team. I love playing. I got a tackle against the number two team in the state of Tennessee my senior year on, on a kickoff against Huntington. It was all, in fact, I know it was against Westview. And ironically, we're playing Huntington tonight. 
I'll never forget when I played Huntington, I held this dude and I got a penalty call and it sucked. It was on the, it was on a, we were doing a fake punt and I pulled and they had it, they had it covered up. If I didn't grab him, he probably would have got tackled anyhow, but uh, dang, I felt so bad about that. I've always, it's always bothered me, but you know, that's the way it goes. Live life, you know, live and you learn. <laughs> but uh, I'll tell you something else too. The football coaches, you know, my football time, it got me in really good shape. It got me to understand the importance of the weight room, which I've carried over to soccer. It's got me to understand like competitiveness and just different things like that. I mean, I'll be honest with you. Basically, my football coaches made me, groomed me to be the soccer coach I am today, if that makes sense. So actually, it dips into the first question I had for you, uh, actually regarding what we're here to talk about rather than right. your incredible past. Right. Uh, what is the value of high school soccer players playing other sports and how have you seen it help their development? Well, first of all, every player who plays basketball or football uh, that comes to me, they're always in great shape. They're always in great shape automatically. I just got to get them in, you know, somewhat better soccer shape. We play a counterattacking style anyhow, so we don't – I don't necessarily have as many, like, cross-country runners, but I have a lot of sprinters that can just counterattack real quick. And, uh, you know, it. it I, I love it. I love it also because it um, – coaches know that I'm not trying to get my players to play other things. They know I'm trying to always – they're not I'm not trying to get them to just play soccer we don't specify we work together as a school here and when they know that they trust me and so yeah I mean I, and I'm involved with basketball I stream the basketball games for them uh and also cover filming and football the same way I'm actually on the football staff as I said to do that I also run their social media accounts in essence they know that I've got their back and I'm going to support them and I'm working with them and so because of that they have a great attitude and their athletes you know talk about playing soccer they don't ever have anything negative to say They're like yeah sure he's a great guy great coach you'll like him Keeps them in good shape. Um, I actually had a football coach one time. One of my best players I ever coached. His name was Caleb Witherspoon. And uh, he was a center back for me. And he was uh, really athletic. And I told the football coach, I said, look, I know y'all might want to keep him just for football because he's got a chance of playing college ball. And they said, Mixon, we never have to pull him out. He's never tired. He can go the whole defensive series and never come out. It's because he's running around with you all spring. It's pretty simple. No, we don't want him to quit soccer. We want him to keep playing soccer. He's a great athlete, and he's always – we have to sub all the other DBs out, but we don't have to sub him out. And I was like, well, that's great. That's awesome. So uh, I just try to be a team player. I think when you uh, – it's uh, I had an old youth pastor talk about – he's actually just a big guy in church, but he was preaching one day at one of our youth things. He was like, Jesus said, if you want to be great among um, – if you want to be great amongst others, you must be servant of all. So I've tried to be a servant. And when you do that enough, it just seems like positive things happen. So, seemingly so like, it's we, we've seen players kind of play different sports i played multiple sports in high school it didn't you know pan out like i wanted to for either of them but you know it, it helped my development in both sports what do you look for as far as a player's habits or, or, or maybe other things in another sport what do you look for when you're trying to get a player to come over and play on your team well, at Gibson County High School, for a little context, um, Gibson County High School until has been around for – this will be its 18th season. And we've had two – no, 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 no. Let's see. Three winning seasons in that time. Now, that was all after I started coaching there. I'm not trying to take my own horn, but I'm saying before me it was really, really bad. And I just kind of came and, kept and caught some low-hanging fruit, and all of a sudden we started doing a little better. It's just one of those things that's kind of been neglected over the years. At different times, wasn't enough funding, wasn't enough this. The coaches, they change coaches a lot. So, with all that being said, uh, for me, I have a high standard. They have to have at least a 96-degree body temperature. Um, they have to be the correct um, – if it's a girl's soccer, they need to be a girl. If it's boy's soccer, they need to be a boy. And if they're willing to work hard, then that's pretty much all I ask. So you're basically just getting a warm body to, to come and play on your team and they kind of mold them from there. And even if they can't play soccer, even if they can't run, I, I'll make them a manager. We have what's called a green team. So our colors are blue and red, but our goalie has to be a separate color. So it's dark green. So I make all my manager shirts with our logo on it, dark green as well. And we, and the, my assistant coach who's over the managers, who's over the, uh, uh, doing a live cast here with Coach Rob. Here's he's in the background. You say hello to the internet. There you go. That's my buddy right there. He is my Coach Beard. He's who they made Coach Beard after. Let me tell you something. He is, 
Like, they kind of copied me with Ted Lasso just a little bit. It's just that he's funny and I'm not. And Coach Rob is definitely Coach Beard without the beard, but all the man. But, uh, yeah, but great guy. But um, the point is, yeah. But now, so, like, with the green team, they actually wear green shirts. It's, like, a big thing. I buy that for them. Uh, they film the game for me. They help get balls. They help just, I mean, so it's kind of like its own little tradition. We have the team, then we have the green team. And so, like, you could be in, you could be in a wheelchair. You could be it, nothing. If you want to be involved with Gibson County Pioneer Soccer, you can be involved with Gibson County Pioneer Soccer as long as you're not a bad, you know, a bad student that gets in trouble or anything like that. You can be involved. That's how we, that's how we do it. So obviously, I'm from the South. I'm from Louisiana. You're you're coaching over in Tennessee. There is a community community type feel to the larger connotation of the South, and it sounds Absolutely. like you have that going on there as well especially at a county school uh can you talk more about the community aspect and what you're going for with these high school soccer uh programs that you have running well okay so here's my idea behind that it's um i told somebody i've coached at gibson county high school it's my alma mater so i'm coaching here now but when i was you know i was assistant coach here for four years then i went to south fulton high school and after for two years then i went to haywood high for three years and then when when mama calls you go home right so uh, I came back to Gibson County, but um, the point there is when I was at South Fulton, and I've said this at every school I've ever been to, I'm not trying to bring this school to the world of soccer. I'm trying to bring the world of soccer to this school. So you have to make it fit the culture, not the other way around. I'm not going to get people to, you know, sit there and call it a pitch or whatever else. Now, can we use correct terminology like center backs and, you know, uh, fullbacks and just different things like, can we use those terms like keeper and stuff? Yeah, we can do all that, but I'm not going to sit there and have the AD saying, well, go out there to the football pitch or, or try to get them. You know, I'm always trying to explain offsides to folks. I'm always trying to explain things to folks. It's just one of those things where, uh, and also like, because I do film football games, I do film basketball games. I do all these other things. Those coaches trust me. They're like, Hey, he's one of us. He's not just that separate foreign, even though I do speak Spanish. He's not just that separate, person that doesn't care about everything else no he cares about everything here and he gets it he understands that our guys are going to be lifting weights in football our guys are going to be doing this and they you know it just he, he gets it and i try to you know I, I try to do that and because of that I, I i fit the culture i fit into the culture i bring my own unique qualities to it but i'm not sitting there trying to change the culture i'm just trying to add to the culture i think that's the difference I want to close on this. It's one thing we, we do with at the end of every show uh, is we allow coaches and players and, and, and scouts and people involved in soccer to give advice to the next generation of American soccer. That's the whole point of this entire show. So as a soccer coach, as someone who is in charge of a lot of kids, you've coached many, many kids over the years. What is one piece of general advice that you would give to the next generation of players? So is it players or coaches or parents? The players. Okay, the players. The the players, what I would just say, the, the best thing you can do, honestly, if it's talking about just developing you as a soccer player, just find you some buddies or find you a local group that you can just play street ball with. Like what I mean by that is like set you up a goal at the house or set you up a, some, some trash cans at the house and just like play. I, I, look, I, I support travel. I understand travel is a great thing, and to an extent. I think it's six steps forward, three steps back. But either way, I think it burns kids out and pulls them away from high school programs and everything else. But still a positive thing overall. Maybe it's a six to four ratio. But just get out there and play and, like, learn it from that sense. That's why other countries are great because they sit there. Uh, the other countries are great at soccer because they play it, like, We'll be scrimmaging in soccer, right, when I get new kids that play. Because I get a lot of kids that have never played before that come out, and they end up being, you know, good. But we'll be sitting there scrimmaging, and all of a sudden they'll score a goal, and they want to pick the ball all the way back to the middle and set it up and everything. I'm like, guys, stop. Grab the ball out of the goal and keep playing. It, it doesn't have to be that formal. Just play. But a lot of times at first they don't even know how to just not play as in, like, structurally, but they don't know how to play. They don't know how to, they don't know how to be natural with anything. It's all – so just learn, develop the fun of playing. And, th like, it's how every kid develops in basketball. They play on the streets. They play it in the gym with their buddies. And then they learn how to 
screen and set plays and pack people and all that stuff. But you learn the tough part of it on the streets. So find you that type of community uh, of friends that just play for the fun of it. And I promise you that that in and of itself will help U.S. soccer tons. Well, Mixon, I, I appreciate you taking time to call me from a, a field in the middle of Tennessee and, uh, and to take time. Actually to, right I mean, you provided... stand. We're actually right next to our concession stand. So I was in my office, so I pulled it back <laughs> out. That, that we converted from an old – it was an old boiler room, right? And they were like, uh, well, you can put your stuff in here. I was like, well, what if I made this in an office? They said, sure, why not? And all of a sudden, we started getting things and getting things donated, started getting things that were – that no one was using anymore and we just kind of made it our own. So, um, yeah. So that, that sounds like the most grassroots American soccer thing I've ever heard. It, uh, it is. It, it, and it, the it, fact that it's, it's taking place in places like Tennessee is, is what this country needs and, and what the developmental process needs and, and guys like you make it work. So I, I certainly appreciate the the time you gave to us. I know you're a pretty busy man, especially on Friday nights with yes, Tennessee sir. and with Tennessee high school football. So, uh, thank you so much for the time, and I, I really do appreciate it. Yes, sir, Mr. Riley. Thank you. Have a good night. God bless. You too. Hi, right, thank you so much for watching the show. We really do appreciate it here at the State Soccer Network. We also have some socials for you to check out. Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at State Soccer Network. And at the State Soccer Network, we also have a website, statesoccernetwork.com, as you can see right there. It's available in the show description with a direct link to find out how to sign up your local high school soccer team and contests and events to win prizes. We also have an iOS app available in the App Store. Thank you so much for watching the things that we make. It really does mean a lot. And remember the State Soccer Network, a place where you can become the next great American talent.